it's very astute, I think, to to point to survival and the fear of death as occupying a, a keystone place in our in our culture. Uh, I think it's obvious that human beings are not only motivated by survival and maximizing security and minimizing risk. People do all kinds of things altruistically all the time, which um, evolutionary science has tried to explain away as kind of malfunctions of the genetics, which, you know, love is supposed to be to, to help your progeny survive. Mm. But sometimes it, it kind of misfires and you altruistically help somebody who doesn't have your genes. I mean, that's a nice try. Even like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I think in a way is upside down. People do heroic things in the most extreme circumstances. And more generally, you can try it. I mean, you can verify this personally. See how you feel if you just dedicate yourself to being as safe as possible and not giving anything to the world because why would you give anything if you could have more for yourself? <laughs> that would make you a little less secure. Like, see how it feels. You're not going to like it. You're going to recognize a drive in you to do more than that, to make the world beautiful, to, to do something better than you need to for the customer, for the market, for the money, because you're devoted to that thing in and of itself, whatever wants to be born through you and whatever the world wants to be through your participation in it. This is a different story of what a human being is than the one that economics and genetics has narrated to us. So, yes. Yeah, so as far as death goes, mm. um, our society and our belief systems make death a lot scarier. When, when we've been confined to a discrete, separate individual self, a economic man, you know, a skin encapsulated ego, a vessel of consciousness inside a flesh robot that, that is annihilated upon the death of the brain. Like, of course, death is scary. But there have been a lot of cultures who have had other understandings of what a human being is and what death is. Oh, but those are just primitive and superstitious. We're at the apex of, of, of knowledge. Uh, and, and they just didn't get it right. You know, we, we know what a human being is now. Well, do we really? How much has to be excluded in order to maintain that view? A lot has to be excluded like all the reincarnation research, you know, like near-death experience research. I mean, there's voluminous documented research about this kind of stuff. And a lot of people have had personal experiences. I've had experiences that obliterate the, <clears throat> the story of self that I have received from the culture. A lot of people have those experiences, but you, but you kind of keep those out into the spiritual realm or like, like you were saying before, like you don't let the word healing get into the World Economic Forum or the academic conference or, or sacred, you know, or spirituality. Like we only maintain a world in which we enact the story of self-interest maximization to the detriment of this planet. We only maintain that by shutting out all of the data points that don't fit mm -hmm. and all of the experiences that don't fit that narrow, confining story.